In at number 10, Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo. It might be hard for some of you to believe, but Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo were actually besties at one point in time. And I guess they proved that men and women can be good friends too. According to Ruffalo, while shooting the film 13 Going on 30, he and Garner became very close. They were talking a lot and becoming best friend status. That was until Ben Affleck came into the picture. After Jen and Ben started getting serious, her friendship with Mark Ruffalo started to dwindle. We're not sure if it was a natural thing or if Ben Affleck was uncomfortable with how close they were. When asked by a fan if he and Jennifer were still friends, Mark said, quote, We had a great time together and I think we would have, but then Ben came on the scene and that was the end of that. So clearly he's still a little salty. And at number 9, Drake and Kanye West. Drake and Kanye started off as friends and collaborators. When Drake was coming up in the industry, Kanye helped him a lot. He produced some of Drake's early hits, as well as even directing one of his music videos. But things all changed when Pusha T exposed that Drake had a son that he was hiding from the world. And Drake assumed that Kanye was the person that gave Pusha that information. The two feuded on and off, but their feud reached new heights with the release of their albums Donda and Certified Lover Boy. In the lead up to the releases, Kanye threatened Drake in a group chat and leaked his address after Drake called out Kanye on a trippy red song. Both albums are released and as of now, Kanye has the number one on the Billboard charts, while Drake broke Spotify and Apple Music's single day streaming record. And at number 8, Leighton Meester and Blake Lively. These two were co-stars on the hit show Gossip Girl, and since they played best friends, it's natural that they became close in real life. But it seems their characters' fate matched their behavior in real life, and the two became frenemies fast. Apparently, the relationship between them got tense during the last two seasons of filming. But the last straw between them was when Blake did not congratulate Leighton on her engagement to Adam Brody. After this, they basically didn't speak again. It was so tense, their co-stars even commented on it. Chase Crawford said about the ladies, quote, There are obviously always little dramas. You're on set for 16 hours, so people get irritable. In any workplace, there are always little things and frustrations. And at number 7, Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez. These two became friends when they were toddlers acting on Barney and Friends. As they grew up, they stayed friends because they were both becoming Disney stars. But their close relationship turned to jealousy fast because they were both competing for essentially the same spot. Other friendships also got in the way, notably the relationship between Selena and Taylor Swift, which Demi did not approve of. This led to the pair unfollowing, then re-following each other on countless occasions. Although it did seem that most of the animosity was coming from Demi. It seems that Selena has tried to stay cordial with Demi, and she has published publicly supported Demi on a number of occasions, but Demi has not done the same back. A few years ago, a finsta belonging to Demi was found that bashed Selena on multiple occasions, but apparently that turned out to be fake. As of now, it's hard to know where they stand, but it's safe to say they are not friends. And at number 6, Biggie and Tupac. These two rappers signified the great divide between the East and the West Coast of America. However, before they were feuding, they were actually good friends. These two were the biggest names in the 90s, and Tupac even supported Biggie while he was coming up in the industry. Biggie said, quote, We just clicked off the top and were cool ever since. But things got tense between them after Tupac was called to a New York studio and was robbed and shot five times. He thankfully survived, but he was sure that Biggie was involved. However, Biggie vehemently denied this. Over the years, the West Coast versus East Coast divide got even deeper, and the pair were badmouthing each other in the press and in their music. Things between them were never reconciled because both men were killed in drive by shootings months apart from the other. Tupac was shot first, and many believe that Biggie was actually involved. Halfway number 5, Drake Bell and Josh Peck. These two were best friends on and off screen when they acted alongside each other on The Amanda Show, which led to them getting their own hit show, Drake and Josh. The duo seemed to remain friendly after their child stardom ended, but it seemed that they drifted apart as they aged, and both men went along different paths. Things reached ahead in their relationship when Josh Peck got married and didn't invite Drake Bell to the wedding. Drake was not happy and tweeted out for the world to see. He tweeted, quote, True colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear. Ties are officially cut. I'll miss you, brother. There was some speculation if it was about the wedding, which Bell confirmed when he also tweeted, quote, When you aren't invited to the wedding, the message is clear. After the story went viral, Josh responded that he was deeply hurt by Bell's tweets, but he also clarified the two hadn't really been friends for years. And at number four, Seth Rogen and James Franco. Seth Rogen and James Franco have collaborated on countless movies together. They've been friends and collaborators since the beginning of their careers. But that all changed recently when Seth Rogen stated that he is no longer planning to collaborate with Franco after reports of multiple accusations of misconduct against women on the set of his movies. These allegations started in 2018. Since
since then multiple women have come forward. When asked about his friendship with Franco, he didn't give a straight answer, but said quote, I don't know if I can define that right now during this interview. I can say, um, you know, it has changed many things in our relationship and our dynamic. In at number three, Kylie Jenner and Jordan Woods. This is probably the messiest one on this list, so of course I had to give you a quick refresher. Kylie and Jordan were besties since childhood, and they grew up doing practically everything together. They even lived together as adults, and Jordan starred in Kylie's reality series, Life of Kylie. Their friendship not only boosted Jordan's clout, but gave her real business opportunities with the family. But that all changed when Jordan hooked up with Tristan Thompson, Chloe's baby daddy and boyfriend at the time. The whole thing was an absolute mess, and as a result, Jordan was cut from the family, including her friendship with Kylie. Jordan ended up going on Red Table Talk and claiming that the interaction she had with Tristan was small, but Chloe called her a liar on Twitter and claimed it was much more. As of now, the relationship is still very tense. In at number two, the Kardashians and Larsa Pippen. If there's one thing to know about the Kardashians, they keep their circle very small, and once you break their trust, it's over. Kim and the rest of the family have been friends with Larsa for decades, but all of a sudden in 2020, the Kardashians and Larsa unfollowed each other on social media, making it clear they were not friends anymore. After rumors started swirling, Larsa claimed nothing bad happened and it was just a falling out. However, months later, she spilled some tea on a podcast, saying that Kanye was most likely the reason for their falling out. Apparently he used to call her at 3 and 4 in the morning and rant to Larsa, but it got too much so she blocked him. She then insinuated that Kim had a problem with this and potentially thought Larsa was doing something shady with Kanye, which Larsa denies. And finally, number one, Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. These two became known for their hilarious sitcom called Kenan and Kel. They were also both child stars living a very similar life, so it's no wonder that they became best friends during this time. But sadly, as they grew up, their friendship did not last. In 2012, Mitchell told TMZ that Thompson hadn't spoken to him in years, saying, quote, the truth is Kenan does not want to be seen with me in any form of media or even have my name mentioned around him. I respect his choice of wanting to make a name for himself solo. It seems that these comments actually resonated with Keenan as he contacted Kel shortly after and they reconciled their differences. They even became so close that they reprised their Good Burger sketch on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And now the pair work as executive producers on the All That revival, so it seems their relationship is closer than ever. At number 10, Gwyneth Paltrow and Winona Ryder. Gwen and Winona were once really good friends and they were seen out tons of times and even lived together at one point. They were two peas in a pod, but everything ended because of their competitiveness when it came to a Hollywood role. Apparently, both of the ladies auditioned for the lead role in Shakespeare in Love, but Gwyneth ended up snagging the role and then even went on to win Best Actress at the Oscars for the role. It was a big victory for Gwen, but a gut punch for Winona. Then years later, when Winona was going through some rough times and she was busted for shoplifting, Gwen took a dig at her, writing in a newsletter saying, quote, Back in the day, I had a friend of me who was pretty hell-bent on taking me down. I restrained myself fighting back, I tried to take the high road, but one day I heard something unfortunate and humiliating that happened to this person, and my reaction was deep relief and happiness." End quote. They were so close but Hollywood just got the best of them and the toxicity of the industry took them down. Before we carry on talking about those celebrity friendships that crashed and burned, I just want to take a quick moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 9, Amber Heard and Kate James. Amber Heard lost a friend due to her actions towards Johnny Depp and her disregard for others. The actress's former friend and assistant Kate James exposed her for her hurtful actions on multiple occasions. During the libel case between Johnny Depp and The Sun publication, we saw testimonies from several people who were close to the couple, but none came close to that of Amber's ex-assistant Kate James. Kate went on record and said that Johnny was mentally and physically hurt by Amber during the time that she worked with her between 2012 and 2015. She also went on to disclose how the beginning of Amber and Johnny's relationship went, saying that Amber would quote, speak in disparaging terms about him and would say things that she was quote, dating an old man. Kate also went on to expose how Amber would copy Johnny's lifestyle. She commented on the fact that upon beginning their relationship, Amber would start behaving weirdly in comparison to her true personality. She also went on to say that Amber quote, went through an odd change that almost morphed her into a version of death. Kate really exposed Amber for who she was behind the scenes, being that they spent so much time together. She did not hold back especially after being betrayed by her when Amber 
retold a traumatic story from Kate's life and pawned it off as if it was her own. This friendship was super toxic and ended badly. At number 8, Taylor Swift and Kim K. Here's a case of on and off again frenemies that just got really messy. So back in 2016, there was some beef between Taylor Swift and Kim Ye. Basically, Taylor said that she was really upset about some lyrics that Kanye had included in one of his songs that he had released at the time. She told fans that she never heard those lyrics and that she never approved of them, but Kim sensed something a little fishy about Taylor. The singer and their Kardashian West had only just reconciled after the whole VMA debacle, but it seemed like their friendship wasn't built to last since Kim decided to expose Taylor for lying about the lyrics. Kim shared a video that she had secretly recorded of Kanye on the phone with Taylor sharing lyrics to his song, and when he involved her name in them, she said it was a compliment and that she approved, even calling him a friend for sharing. Kim doesn't always get involved in Kanye's drama, but when she does, she has receipts and you know she's gonna share them. On top of that, Taylor obviously made a song about their friend breakup and dished about the whole situation, so I guess in a way they both betrayed each other. At number 7, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie were the best of friends at one point, practically inseparable, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked, and by the Fire Nation, I mean Nicole. Nicole decided to allegedly expose Paris and play her adult film at one of her parties. Their friendship pretty much crashed and burned at that point, leaving the two of them at odds. While this incident was only speculation and rumors, and it was never confirmed by either party, this portrayal seems to be the reigning theory as to what happened between them and why they had such a big falling out because they stopped speaking to each other and they were no longer seen in public together and something serious had to have happened for these BFFs to have such a falling out. The only time Paris really spoke out about her breakup with her bestie was during an interview where she said quote, it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends. Nicole knows what she did and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. End quote. At number 6, Kim Cattrall and Sarah Jessica Parker. When Sex in the City was at its peak, everyone just pretty much assumed that the leading ladies were all best friends because they looked so close on TV. But we found out later that this was definitely not the case. After the third movie was taken off the table because of Cattrall's refusal to do the film, this is when the truth of the matter started to show. But the feud really came to a head after Cattrall's brother passed away and Sarah Jessica Parker wrote a message of condolence to her former colleague on social media. Cattrall was not having it and clapped back to Sarah Jessica Parker's message by writing, quote, Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Let me make this very clear. You are not my friend. So I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. End quote. This made it clear that there was a lot of built up tension between them. Cattrall has addressed the fight numerous times, saying that the mean girl culture of the show is really what destroyed it. At number 5, James Charles and Tati Westbrook. James and Tati's falling out is probably one of the best examples of a toxic friendship. This whole bi sister scandal from 2019 saw their entire relationship torn apart in the matter of one video. James and Tati famously had a relationship dating all the way back to the beginning of James's career, but Tati suddenly decided to cut ties with him after he posted at Coachella endorsing Sugar Bear Hair, the competitor to Tati's vitamin company. She then proceeded to expose him for his endorsement, and she could have stopped there, but she decided to also expose him for his alleged misconduct with other people as well. She claimed that James was trying to quote, manipulate someone's sexuality, and she referenced a specific incident that went down in 2019 at her birthday party. Though James thought of Tati as some kind of parental figure, she still decided to publicly cut ties with James, thus beginning the whole Dramageddon fiasco. Their falling out and subsequent drama roped so many other people into the mess as well, and a lot of people lost friends and followers. It was incredibly messy and overly toxic. At number 4, Little Mix. On October 8th of this year, former Little Mix member Jessie Nelson released her music video for her song Boys featuring Nicki Minaj, and this ended up causing a lot of drama. After the video dropped, backlash ensued as viewers immediately started speculating on whether or not Jessie was deliberately trying to portray herself as a black woman for content. And and people started calling her out for blackfishing. In the boys video, fans pointed out that Jessie was using a lot of black centric aesthetics, most notably a darker tan, but with this blackfishing controversy came more drama as people started looking into Jessie's past with Little Mix. Soon one of the girl group's members came forward to say that she had actually warned Jessie about blackfishing and how it's wrong, but Jessie still did it anyway and she even went so far as to claim that no one had ever commented on it until this video came out. This caused people to take a deeper look into Jessie's falling out with the 
the group and the toxic friendships that they had. The downfall of Little Mix became a hot topic for a while with people taking sides, but the bottom line is that all of this ended badly for everyone and no one came out on top. At number 3, Heidi Montag and Lauren Conrad. Heidi and Lauren were the it girls of reality TV back in the early 2000s when they started in the hit show The Hills. But in 2007, their friendship ended when Heidi Montag and her boyfriend Spencer spread a rumor that Lauren made an explicit tape with her boyfriend Jason. After the rumors started spreading through entertainment news like wildfire, Lauren decided to come forward about everything and commented on her website writing quote, We did not make a tape. Jason and I are both shocked and hurt that people would say such horrible things about us. I can't believe that somebody would go to such great lengths to try and damage my reputation. End quote. This situation got even worse when Lauren still had to shoot season 3 of The Hills and that season is where the fight came to a head and there was an epic fight on camera between the reality TV stars. This fight was so bad that it still triggers some people, showing that this falling out was as bad as they come. At number 2, Zayn Malik and Perry Edwards. Yes, Zayn and Perry were in a relationship, but they were friends too, at least until the toxicity came in and ruined everything. The couple had started dating in 2012 and were engaged in 2013, but things soon turned sour after and there's been a lot of hate in the mix there too. At first, when news of their split broke, there was little to no information about it other than reports that Zayn had asked Perry to move out of the house that they had shared together. And neither one of them were really talking about what happened between them, but things got heated when Zayn retweeted a tweet that said, retweet for Fifth Harmony's worth it or favorite for Little Mix's Black Magic. Instead of vote for his ex-girlfriend's music group, he voted for her competition and fans immediately started the hashtag Zayn has no chill. Soon enough, Perry bounced back from the breakup and said things in her song, shout out to my ex, about Zayn. The end of their relationship was messy to say the least and a lot of people got roped into the drama which just fueled the negativity surrounding the whole situation. And finally, at number 1, Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. Before Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber were a couple, they were pretty close friends. But now they're at odds after their toxic relationship went up in flames. They started dating in 2011 when they were still teenagers and from that point they had a rocky time together. They were on and off again for a while before finally ending things for good in 2018 when Haley Baldwin came along. People were already aware of how toxic Selena and Justin's relationship was simply because of how many times they had public breakups and makeups, but in early 2020, Selena came forward to talk more in depth about their relationship and how she experienced mistreatment. Selena said that she was quote, a victim of certain things, saying that what she felt was emotional mistreatment from Justin. She also went on to say that it took her a long time to find strength in her experiences and to shake her quote, victim mentality. End quote. Justin never released a statement in response, but in late 2019, he did open up about his actions in past relationships, saying that he became, quote, resentful, disrespectful to women, and angry. It's heartbreaking to hear just how bad things were between them, and the fact that they aren't together is probably for the best. When celebrities hit it off, they sometimes join forces to embark on friendships that make us all jealous. Some celebrities have even managed to keep their friendships intact for decades. However, some other famous faces have seen their friendships implode right before their eyes. Hi, I'm Stacey Taylor and today I'm counting down the top 10 celebrity best friend breakups. At number 10 we have Seth Rogen and James Franco. Seth Rogen and James Franco were friends for decades before things all came to a crash. The stars first met when working on the set of Freaks and Geeks back in 1999. The duo then formed a bond and started to consistently collaborate on projects over the years. However, in May of 2021, Seth would tell the Sunday Times that he has no plans to work with James ever again following accusations of misconduct. Seth was so eluded by James's actions that it actually caused his relationship to be strained with the star. Back in January 2018, the Los Angeles Times reported that five women accused James of having inappropriate behavior and James would also go on to deny the allegations. By 2019, two former acting students would also go on to sue James for his behavior and a settlement would finally be reached by February of 2020. Seth would then go on to tell the Sunday Times that he despises inappropriate behavior behavior and that he would never cover or conceal the actions of someone doing it or put someone in a situation where they were around someone like that. And at number 9, we have Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. In the early 2000s, Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton ruled the socialite scene together. However, in 2005, things between the pair started to go south and they refused to film the fourth season of their reality show, The Simple Life. And they would go on to insist of being filmed separately while working
working odd jobs across the country. Paris would later come out to say it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends and I will not go into the details of what happened. All I will say is Nicole knows what she did and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. According to OK Magazine, the rift all started when Nicole decided to play Paris's infamous home video at a party to celebrate the heiress hosting a gig on Saturday Night Live. It seems like the two were able to put aside their beef however in 2011 as they were both photographed together and they have been every now and then. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. And number 8 we have Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato. Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato first met each other on the set of Barney and Friends back in 2002. And since the pair has gone through a lot of up and downs, for the longest time the pair were practically inseparable as both of their acting and music careers took off. However, one year after the duo teamed up to film a princess protection program, their relationship appeared to have shifted. Demi would go on to claim that Selena let her friends and family be mean to her and that she just couldn't trust Selena any longer. The pair would then reunite by 2013 and they would follow each other and then they would unfollow each other again by 2014 just to reunite by 2017 again and then by 2018 they would unfollow each other again and even after Selena congratulated Demi for her Grammy Award performance of anyone in 2020, Demi would confirm that they were no longer friends. At number 7 we have Kylie Jenner and Jordan Woods. Kylie Jenner and Jordan Woods have been best friends since they were in 8th grade. However, reports started to emerge that Tristan Thompson, Khloe Kardashian's boyfriend and father of her daughter at the time had cheated on Khloe for the second time with Jordan. The pair ultimately would end their friendship and Kylie would ask Jordan to move out of her guest house. Jordan would then later address the scandal on the red table talk and then she would say on the way out of the party, he did kiss her and there was no passion, no making out and she was so shocked by the situation that she just pretended it didn't happen. Kylie would then go on to choose loyalty to her sister over her friendship and since the scandal broke out, the two have fallen out and refused to hang out with each other. And number 6 we have Kim Kardashian and Black Chyna. Kim Kardashian and Black Chyna were close friends before Kim's younger sister Kylie Jenner began dating Black Chyna's ex-boyfriend Tyga. On an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians in 2016, Kim would go on to say, I understand that Kylie's dating Tyga and it completely broke China's heart. I feel for her situation. It's definitely uncomfortable for me when Kylie and Tyga started dating, absolutely because China was my friend. The two then would reconcile after China began dating Kim's brother in 2016, but when the two ended up splitting up, things would turn sour between Kim and China once more, and in 2017, China would try to sue the Kardashian family for being the reason why Rob and China was cancelled after season one. So it's pretty safe to say these two won't be making up any anytime soon. At number 5 we have Gwyneth Patrol and Winona Ryder. In the 90s, Gwyneth and Winona were frequently photographed together when they were dating good friends Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. However, by 1998 the pair's friendship went up in smoke after Gwyneth stumbled upon a script for Shakespeare's love in Ryder's home and asked to audition for the lead role. And she got it. Gwyneth would then go on to win an Oscar for her performance and Winona would then become a frenemy who was pretty hellbent on taking her down. In 2002, when she was caught shoplifting, Gwyneth would say, I restrained myself from fighting back and I tried to take the high road, but one day when I heard that something unfortunate and humiliating happened to this person, my reaction was deep relief and happiness. And number four, Katy Perry and Rihanna. It's no secret that Katy Perry did not approve of Rihanna's reheated romance with Chris Brown. And it ultimately led to the pair's fizzled out friendship before Katy Perry and Rihanna would be seen sitting together at various award shows and they could be seen giggling over inside jokes. However, when Rihanna decided to take Chris Brown back, the two would soon distance themselves. After all the drama that went down between Rihanna and Chris, Katy didn't approve of their relationship and I don't blame her. Even after the two split, they still appeared to have tension between them and the two former buddies were once pictured at the 2018 Met Gala together and the photo appeared to be really awkward and then Katie was even snubbed out from attending Rihanna's star studded after party. And number 3 we have Drake Bell and Josh Peck. Almost everyone who loved the show Drake and Josh was crushed upon hearing the news that Drake Bell and Josh Peck had a dust up that ended their friendship. When Josh finally ended up tying the knot with his fiance, Drake's invite would be lost in the shuffle and it was hinted that he was never even sent one in the first place. After seeing photos of the wedding, he would take to Twitter to 
to say he was deleting feelings on who he thought was his BFF. Drake would go on to say, when you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. True colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear. Ties are officially cut. I'm a miss you brother. Drake would then later regret his rant and wish he just texted Josh instead. The two later would squash their beef. However, when allegations would arise about Drake's inappropriate behavior, Josh would distance himself once again from Drake. At number two today, we have Bella Thorne and Tana Monjo. Bella and Tana dated for a period of time and they even were a part of a thruple with Maud's son. When the two finally broke up, they decided to become BFFs. However, at some point, the two's friendship would end and they would ignite a pretty messy feud that would pretty much break the internet. Bella would claim that Tana broke girl code after the paparazzi pictured her hanging out with Maud's son and Bella would then go on to release a song about Tana and then Tana would claim that Bella had no friends and that everybody hated her. Following a series of tweets, the two had a pretty simmering feud for a couple of years until recently the stars have decided to drop their beef and rekindle their friendship. However, it was a pretty messy journey to get to where they are today and it's still worth mentioning them during today's top 10. And at number one today we have Denise Richards and Heather Locklear. Way back in the day, Denise Richards was married to Charlie Sheen and Heather Locklear was married to Richie Sambora. The two actresses were not only close friends, however they were also neighbors. The pair was also also so close that they started a few episodes together on the same TV show. However, all good things come to an end and the pair would eventually have a falling out after both couples split up. Denise would then start dating Richie. The drama was so messy in public that the drama still comes up as gossip on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like the time when Lisa tried to use drama to throw shade at Denise back in 2020. I mean, considering it's girl code to never date your friend's ex, you definitely won't see these two rekindle their friendship anytime soon. Starting in at number 10, we have Antonio Brown. Former NFL wide receiver Antonio Brown would find himself under fire from fans and other celebrities after he chose to stand by Kanye West after Kanye made some anti-Semitic comments. Antonio, who played in the NFL back in 2021, said he will still remain in his role as president for Donda Sports, which is Kanye's sport agency. With Antonio remaining true to its mission of Donda, he's also channeled his buddy's controversial campaign campaign by saying and supporting Kanye's WLM movement. Kanye has had a lot of criticism over his WLM shirt that he wore during his Yeezy fashion show. Despite the negative reactions, he has still gone on to make headlines for anti-Semitic comments. Overall, the controversy, both Antonio and Kanye have started to become really close friends and they've even started to work on some music with each other. It also seems like Kanye isn't the only one doing some pretty odd things lately as Brown has had his own share of controversy when a video that was released back in October showed himself exposing himself to a woman in Dubai. With Antonio calling Kanye's comments reactionary and selective outrage, he will continue to bring his new ideas, experiences, and design to our world while remaining in support of the humanity Kanye is bringing into the world. Number 9, Kim Kardashian. While we all notice the prospect of an epic, especially revolting fashion industry scandal unfolding, the response of some of the world's biggest celebrities caused many of us to be dumbfounded for continuing to support Cedric Charbit and the brand he represents as the CEO for Balenciaga just days before America's Thanksgiving holiday, the fashion house of Balenciaga would trigger some major backlash for its 2022 holiday advertising campaign, which toyed with some of the most deprived evils known to man. With the campaign exploiting children, when the photos emerged of little girls holding on to handbags that were shaped like teddy bears wearing some pretty outrageous gear and a childlike drawing of a devil, we were all left feeling sick. At the end of the controversy, Balenciaga would try to claim that their plush bear bag should have never featured children in its campaign and that they had no idea that the advertisement contained these images because they never approved the images. However, knowing that all companies have the final say to anything hitting the media, we all knew this was one giant lie made for the company to try to save their reputation. Kim Kardashian still choosing to stand by Balenciaga, a brand she seems to get all of her leotarded gloved outfits from. After days of being silent, 
She would say I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaign and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take necessary measures for this to never happen again. While Kim has decided that she will be reevaluating her relationship with the brand, many of us have been disgusted at the fact that Kim is being a coward for not immediately cutting ties off with the brand, and we're honestly all disappointed that she is a grown up with her own children who should be protecting other children, but instead she's failing to protect the most innocent and vulnerable by supporting a brand that is always out here showing huge levels of controversy consistently. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number 8, Diddy. When Diddy decided to hop on the newest train in pop culture that revolved around cancel culture, many fans were pretty disappointed in his decision. When Diddy went on to say, as a music family, none of us are saints, none of us are out here without things that happen to them in life. When the 2022 Billboard Music Awards came around, Diddy squarely stood behind Org's decision to invite Travis Scott and Morgan Wallen to perform. While explaining that one of the things he wants to do is cancel the uncancel, as the trend needs to be stopped, he would also go on to say that Travis went through a tragedy and Morgan hurled the N word while talking to his boy. People make mistakes. Now we're moving forward on with love and respect for everybody that was hurt or affected. It's time to forgive. However, some actions are just un forgivable. As Morgan had been cancelled from seven award shows last year, after the incident rose, his music sales would actually rise during the period. As for Travis Scott on the other hand, he pretty much was sidelined for months after the Astro World tragedy, having 100,000 people present and asking them to search the stage and ignoring an ambulance in the crowd was just disappointing to see and the fact that he is out here supporting it is just heartbreaking. Number 7, Bella Thorne. So last year when Army Hammer's fantasies were exposed and some unveiled verified screenshots would show ARMY making some pretty serious claims. When it came to his fantasies, although the topic was trending online, many celebrities choose to remain silent about the situation, except for actor Bella Thorne, who took to her Instagram to defend. She would say, I honestly can't believe this. People are crazy to fake this kind of stuff. Poor guy and his kids like leave his family alone. No way he's a freak. Also, there's a million fake screenshots going around. People would certainly begin to criticize Bella's support by saying Bella Thorne is trash. How do some people still not see this? And Bella, Army probably wasn't thinking about the good of his children when he told these girls about his fantasies. With Bella believing that she had more insight and wisdom when it came around to how Army Hammer used his power to push boundaries with other women, the fact that she can sit here and claim that she's an ally to women and survivors, but doesn't let women have the chance to share their stories before claiming it as fake DMs caused a lot of people to tell the star that no one actually asked for her opinion. Coming in at number 6, we have Bill Gates. When Bill Gates admitted that he was fundraising meetings that were held with late billionaire GE, he would discuss that the role that his relationship had with Jeffrey played a huge part in his divorce with Melinda Gates. When Bill sat down with Sunday Times, he would say that he didn't realize that by having those meetings, it would be seen as giving Jeffrey credibility. You're almost saying I forgive that type of behavior or something so clearly that the way it's seen that I made a huge mistake not understanding that. With Melinda speaking publicly about her separation from Bill, she would tell CBS that many things ultimately contributed to her decision to end the pair's marriage. She would then reveal a bunch of secrets that included that there were whispers for years about Gates' extramarital relationships for people who work for him, and that his behavior was known as an open secret. Bill has always been scheduling off-site meetings that weren't on his calendar with Jeffrey, having multiple employees of Bill and Melinda's foundation visit his mansion and speak to the foundation about a proposed dollar charitable fund after he served jail time. And number 5, Sharon Osbourne. When Piers Morgan voiced his disbelief in what Meghan Markle had to say about her mental health to Oprah, he would fake the raft of thousands of fans. When Sharon Osbourne would tweet her support for her longtime friend, this would cause a confrontation with the talk co-host Cheryl Underwood, who would then ask Osbourne on air if she was a racist. Shortly after, the two would engage in this huge altercation, and the conflict would start an investigation by CBS, which would force Sharon to apologize. Sharon, in writing, would then say, to anyone of color that I offended, or to anyone that feels confused, or let down by what I said, 
I'm truly sorry, she wrote in a statement. I panicked, felt blindsided, got defensive, and allowed my fear and horror of being accused of being a racist take over. After her statement in support for Pierce Morgan continued, she would face further claims by her colleagues' remarks, which some she would go on to admit to and some she would deny. Osborne would then join her friend Pierce on talk TV, where the presenters hold nothing back and say what they feel and not following one party at all. And number four, James Charles. After Charlie D'Amelio uploaded a YouTube video that many people considered offensive as it showed her and her sister Dixie spitting out food in front of a personal chef, many users would deem it inappropriate. James Charles, who was also at the dinner, wouldn't be called out for any inappropriate behavior, surprisingly, like Charlie and Dixie. However, that didn't stop him from speaking his mind about cancel culture and the D'Amelios dropping followers. James would go on to say the Charlie situation is not sitting right with me right now. 100 million followers in one year and y'all expect her to know how to be a perfect role model? Backlash because she's a picky either and made a joke about milestones. 30 plus year olds dragging someone half their age. Feels familiar. However, I think a lot of people weren't upset about the fact that the girls didn't like the food, but the fact that they were beginning to spit up the food in front of the chef and making hurtful comments about it. The fact James tried to support this toxic behavior is just a little outrageous because even with age, you can't justify someone's poor table manners because we were all taught better to react during these situations at a young age. And number three, boozy. After the baby made some homophobic remarks during his set at the 2021 Rolling Loud Festival in Miami, Boozy would take to his Instagram Live to rant about the displeasure of people canceling the baby over his remarks. Shortly after the baby's performance, even little Nas would make a joke that him and Jack Harlow would be wearing nothing during the VMA's performance while performing Industry Baby for charity. And this also really didn't sit well with Boozy as he would claim, no one should be picking sides over the baby saying some wild things. Boozy definitely wasn't done with his rant and he would continue on in another video about his outrage over Little Nas's announcement. With several artists, including thousands of fans, speaking out against the baby, it's extremely hurtful remarks that were made. All Boozy did was add more fuel and stigma to the discrimination that surrounds the LGBTQ community. The mistruths that were used by the baby and supported by Boozy had no place in society and the fact that the musicians used their voice to spread so much hate towards the most marginalized people in our community is just saddening. Boozy's out here saying people shouldn't be taking sides, yet he took sides to spread hate instead of using his voice for good. At number two, Bo Derek. Now the Kardashian family has been slammed for black fishing for years, especially when it comes to their braids. When Kim Kardashian West was accused of cultural appropriation after crediting actress Bo Derek as the inspiration behind her box braids, she would even go on to credit the braids as Bo Derek braids. Now Bo Derek would come to the star's defense so Bo Derek, who is now 61, wore her hair like this while she was in the 1979 film 10, which featured the star running down a beach. Bo Derek would take to her Twitter account to say, hey, it's just a hairstyle that I worked on in the movie 10. Kim Kardashian calls it Bo Derek braids because she copied my pattern of braids. I copied it from Anne Margaret's backup singer from her Las Vegas show. And we all copy Queen Nefertari. I hope her royal highness is flattered. While Derek has referred to the Egyptian queen, the two came under fire for not recognizing the styles and the history and origins and framing the looks as something new or edgy. Many people have been forced to cut their braids out, to play sports, or even to attend class, so both celebrities not understanding the hurt braids can cause was the concept of culture vulturing, and it was pretty disappointing to see. And at number one today, we have Nikita Dragon. When the drama between James Charles and Tati Westbrook erupted online, things would become more complicated after Tati would reveal James was manipulating men that were still emerging into adulthood. Tati would also reveal that James was spreading lies about her and betraying her after she spent years helping him with his brand. After Nikita Dragon showed the screenshots that Sugar Bear agreed to give Charles influencer tickets if he did a promotion, she would force herself into a situation that definitely didn't look good on her image. Especially when James told Tati he was being swarmed by crazy fans to even get those tickets. Over the years, James has become a huge controversial figure and Nikita has has consistently defended the star and has stayed by his side in the wake of all his bad behavior with James manipulating younger men. Nikita couldn't even understand the gravity of those topics and she's continued to support James even when more of the situation became to come into light.